guys, to the finale of Return of the Phantom. We've got an encounter coming up, so I'm going to get my sword ready. No real reason. Let's roll. Get prepared for the naffest fight ever. If we'll ever get there. He's here. Oh, it's him! You! How dare you trespass here! <laughs> it's no pleasure, my friend. Oh, that is a me quote and half. Stand back, foul beast, or I shall cause you great harm. Stand back, foul beast, or I shall cause you great harm. Let's do. Ha! I shall enjoy watching you try. Basically, you get two attempts at this. First time, he tries on a lobster of fireball at you. <laughs> Trust me. Second time, he will hit. So, get your sword ready, attack him, and charge. Schling! Oh, epicness. <laughs> the swine. Raul, you, you have some moves, my what friend. What happened to him? I don't know. I don't know. Well, quickly, we must run. Okay. Take the score from the organ, it may be useful. I was just going to say exactly that. So, once we've gone through our hurry, we're going to take the music score. So, let's roll. We're going to steal his opera, and then we're going to leg it. The score is a thick stack of staff paper with musical notes written all over the pages. At the top is the title, Don Juan Triumphant. Triumphant? Ah, a brilliant opera of the highest class. Right, let's room, leave the room to the left. We're going to make haste, guys. Trust me, look at that. This is the fastest we've been walking throughout the whole game. Okay, before we leg it out of here, make sure you grab that ore from the left column. Trust me, we'll need it. Okay, we're going to smack the opera phantom over the head with it. Come on. Hurry up, you two. Let me take the ore. No, I don't want to take Christine. Take the ore. This is a stand ore, useful for steering a boat or gondola, with a skull at the end of it. How fun. Continue through the left. And basically, we will come to our mode of transportation. Here we go. On board we go. And that's why we didn't go through there to begin with. Climb onto the boat immediately. Follow Christine, my good man. I hope you guys are keeping up with the epic pace of this game. Although we are moving quite quickly now. Oh, a nice lovely bit of um, semi-FMV. I never told you why I wanted you to meet me after the opera. I knew Eric would come for me eventually. So I thought we would run away together, far away. Maybe you didn't like your scrolling text as well. Christine, there's something about me that you don't know. Shh, darling, never mind. Let's not talk now. Do you mind giving me help rowing? A silence here is comforting. Is it? Is it really? You just gotta wonder where the phantom is. Probably pretty close. Okay, through here we go. Through the door. Let's hurry, Christine, who's making a run for it. And I wonder why the phantom left as a gondola parks out back. Yeah, who knows. Maybe he was just showing an act of generosity or kindness. Oh, hello. Enter the middle level. We don't need to go to the top, don't worry. Although, we will at the end. Ah, bless. 
<gasps> oh! Gut kick for the swine. Hurry, Raul, there isn't a moment to lose. Oh, for God's sake. Go, go, go. This time we want to go to the upper level. Oh, yes. I was tricking you guys. <laughs> so, guys. This is it. Let's walk right. Let's get down to action. Epic music. This can only mean an epic battle. So, let's save the game. Oh, well, I was going to call it finale, but what the hey. Down the chandelier hole. And let's get ready for a fight. You notice that the cable is a bit frayed. It might not withstand too much strain, but you throw caution to the wind and proceed. Christine is in the hands of that madman. You can do it, Raul. You have the strength of a thousand hippos. Amen. There he is, guys. Stay back, fool! Never! No worries, my darling. Unhand her, fiend! Go on, get him, Ryu. Challenge him. I shall tend to her later, but you, monsieur, you have meddled in my affairs for the last time! On guard! Prepare to die, phantom! Come on, get him, Ryu! Oh, ah, oh. go on. No, monsieur Rich has probably been cut in half by that sword. Okay, for this bit. We get an awesome bit of FMV. Now, what you do, you push the cane. That is vital. Push the cane. A nicer, <laughs> nice and active there. <laughs> now, you may be thinking we punch this guy in the face, but what we actually do is we steal his mask. And my god, is he ugly. Go on. Ooh! My eyes! Oh god, I'm blind! Ah! They really did try and make the most out of that one sound clip. <laughs> there we go, guys! The epilogue! This was the end of Return of the Phantom! Raoul? Monsieur Montpont! Oh look! Monsieur Brie, his eyes are opening! W what? You must see. Thank goodness. Roll, are you alright? Where am I? Where am I? You are in the Opera Library. You've had a bad fall, Monsieur Montpont. Who are you? Who are you? Why, I am Christine Florent. We met earlier, don't you remember? You poor man. Perhaps we should call the doctor. I'm sorry to get deja vu here. Go away and let me sleep. What year is this? What year is this? What year? This is worse than I thought. Why, it's 1993. Ah, this what a glorious year. you fell from the catwalk. Oh, go away and let me sleep. Go away and let me sleep. <laughs> we will. But first, we must make sure you are all right. I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. What? No, monsieur. My body is quite warm and alive. Okay. I'm afraid you really must see the doctor. But you were strangled by the phantom. But you were strangled by the phantom. The phantom? My dear boy, you are delirious. W what? I realize that many of my boyfriends don't come around much anymore, but I wouldn't call any of them phantoms. You must be Christian Day reincarnated or something. You must be Christine Day reincarnated or something. Christine Day? Wasn't she? She was the Phantom of the Opera's object of desire. A singer with the opera. A hundred years ago. <laughs> you must rest, Raoul. Why don't I go and fetch the doctor? Mm, yeah, you probably should, if I'm honest. Please do, Christine. Ah, oh, now they think we're mad. Take care. 
I'll be back. I didn't fall from the catwalk. The phantom pushed me. I didn't fall from the catwalk. The phantom pushed me. The phantom, eh? My dear boy, we haven't had a phantom here in over a hundred years. I think your reading that book has put too many images in your head. <laughs> you, you haven't had any notes from the phantom? You haven't had any notes from the phantom? Notes? This is quite mysterious. Oh, I have no notes from any phantom. You are imagining things, Raoul. Why don't you rest until the doctor comes? But he was here. I have his mask. And Wait, where are they? But he was here. I have his mask and... Wait, where are they? My dear Raoul, you are mistaken. Those items have been locked in that glass case for a century. Look. What? You glance over at the glass case and see that it is whole and uh, that it's whole. Inside, you can see the Phantom's mask, a small golden wedding ring, and the stack of sheet music entitled Don Juan Triumphant. Who caused the chandelier tragedy? Well, who caused the chandelier tragedy? What chandelier tragedy? The chandelier! Come on! The chandelier fell on the audience earlier tonight! <laughs> My dear boy, that bump on the head really has done a number on you. The chandelier is hanging from the ceiling, where it has always hung for a hundred years. Go away and just leave me alone. Go away and leave me alone. Very well, you rest. Christine will be back with the doctor soon. Well, it appears our dear friend Raoul Montrand isn't well. You're perplexed. Was it a dream? It couldn't have been. It was too real. Wait. What about Madame Giri's book? You decide to check on the shelf. To what on the? You decide to check on what the book says about the Phantom's demise. <coughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. Let's have a good read of it. This is the epilogue, guys. You quickly turn to the last paragraph, which reads, Eric the Phantom of the Opera met his death, along with the brave Raoul de Chenet, in 1881, when the chandelier upon which the two men were fighting fell from the ceiling. Monsieur de Chenet was given a hero's burial, while the Phantom was buried in an unmarked pauper's grave. But the artifacts were kept in the Opera's library for safekeeping. I do believe that the world has heard the last of Eric the Phantom of the Opera. So it was a dream. The endings change. You quickly thumb through the book. Once again, to make sure what kind of trick have the forces of destiny played on you, you realise now that you somehow managed to save the life of not only Christian Day, but Christine Florent. And as for the Phantom, he is gone forever. There we go, guys. We've changed history for the better. <laughs> or have we? Or is he? There is no such thing as a chance, and what to us seems m merest accident springs from the deepest source of destiny, Juran Christoph Friedrich von Schiller. What a name. 1759 to 1805. Well, there we go, guys. You have achieved a score of 250 out of 250 possible points, which gives you the rank of director. Oh, well, what can I say? <laughs> well, guys, that was Return of the Phantom. I really hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did. It was absolutely fantastic. Time for some credits, as I think is uh, well deserved. Designed and written by Raymond Benson. Produced by Matt Grusen. Lead programmer and technical director Brian Reynolds. Art director Ken Nishiyu. This game is absolutely brilliant. I mean, the music, fantastic. Graphics, brilliant. Whole plot of the game is amazing. No matter how many times you play it, it always seems to retain that spooky feeling, you know? Lead artist, Frank Fraser. Music buyer, Michael Bross. The development team, applications programming, Paul Hayes. Mad system design, Matt Grusom and Brian Reynolds. But yeah, no matter how many times you play this game, it is always spooky. It just has that brilliant charm. 
the voice acting which is that good that you know whenever the phantom jumps out of somewhere you can't help feeling that the hairs on your arms or your neck just rise up suddenly it really is spooky in fact you do get goose pimples for some of it maybe even on your first time I mean, back in 1993, I'm sure a lot of people thought this was practically the equivalent of today's amnesia. <laughs> but, well, maybe not. Maybe back in the day, people were generally made of harder stuff, or couldn't really see past 2D graphics. But there we go, guys. Return of the Phantom. Fantastic game. And to be honest, I do really hope that I, uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more DOS games in the future. I've enjoyed well, pretty much all the ones I've played so far. Particularly this one. Absolutely outstanding. It was just so well presented and directed, even. Julie Gurry by Yvonne Chinoff. Madame Gurry, Yvonne Chinoff. The squ Squashed Woman, Ginny Schmidt. Phantom of the Opera. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Ken Ray's Phantom of the Opera stunt double. Ah, this classic track. Sound Department Management. Ken Legage. Sound programming, Ken Legage, <laughs> Jin McConkey, Jack Miller, Scott Patterson. I just really hope the game doesn't actually uh, like desync itself and it now thinks we're at the, yeah, the start screen. Voice acting, CD-ROM version of course. Uh, voice track edition, CD-ROM version, Jack Miller. And voice acting, Rao, Stuart W. Howard, Christine Day, Jonathan, J uh, John Arthur Caspiani. Same with Christine Florent. Monsieur Brie, Mr. Cheese, Raymond Benson. Charles, Steve Zumbrun. All of you brilliant. The Phantom of the Opera, Greg Kemper. He did a brilliant job, to be honest. Quality insurance team, or assurance team. Great job. QA management, Michael Craighead. It is unbelievable to think how many people actually went into the production of all these old games. Especially when you think of, like, the size of uh, all these modern huge games like um, I don't know Oblivion or Skyrim for instance the teams of hundreds upon hundreds of people working on it but with a rel well I say relatively small team you can create a brilliant game like this just something to think about really that's kind of I suppose what the whole charm around indie games is um, is that Manville Illustrations Mark Gledden Marvel Design and Layout, Joe Morrill, based on the novel The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Acknowledgements. The Phantom team would like to thank the following individuals for their uh, additional contributions. Robert Pomori, Lyric Theatre, Baltimore. Steve Goldstein, Morris Mechanic Theatre, Baltimore. Oh, this is coming from Baltimore. <laughs> Doug Kaufman, Kate Morrill, Randy Frank, and Sin Mir, oh, legend. Man behind the Civilization games of many others, like Cobra Action. This is a work of fiction. Any similarities between persons living or dead and characters in this story are entirely coincidental, except for Edgar Degas, who is a real painter, and who may or may not have been a lecherous old man. But you know he did paint all those pictures of young Bella. Oh, never mind. <laughs> CC, closed caption for the sound card impaired. Absolutely brilliant. That is that is a charm that new modern games don't have all the time. Classic little things like that. Do we get thanked? I hope we do. No. Well, there we go, guys. That was Return of the Phantom. I've been Shellabex. I really hope you all enjoy this, and we'll see you for the next adventure. Have a brilliant day, guys, and we'll see you then.